Hello, my name is Beth Dixon, and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on the mean, median, mode, midrange, the measures of center. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoints to create these videos. If you're in the beginning of your probability and statistics course, let me pause here to give some quick advice. This course is a language-based mathematics course. By that, I mean that the definitions and language of the course are vital and of top importance. Notation also plays a big role. As you're learning the new vocabulary and notations that are associated with this course, write the symbols, words, and definitions down on index cards and study them as you would in a human anatomy or biology course. The better you learn the notation and definitions early, the easier things are during the later parts of the course. Now, let me climb down off my soapbox and continue with the PowerPoint. Lowercase n represents the sample size, the number of data items in our sample. Uppercase n is our population size, the number of data items in our population. Sample and population would also be good to put in your definition list on index cards. Oops climbing back off the soapbox. X is a single data value and will represent each data value in turn. Next we have this funny looking symbol. It means to add together. It's actually the Greek letter Sigma. A lot of our statistic notations are Greek letters. And just like our alphabet, the Greek alphabet has capital letters and lowercase letters. In Greek, this symbol here is, that's shaped like an E, is the capital sigma. And this symbol here is the lowercase or small sigma. We do use both in probability and statistics. Next, we have two symbols together. Think about what that should mean. X, data value, add together. It means to add up all the data values. The next notation is an X with a bar or line over the top. We call this X bar. It represents the sample mean. Later in this presentation, we will define the sample mean. We're almost done. The next is another Greek letter, and it stands for the population mean. It is the Greek letter mu. We will see a formula for the population mean later in this presentation. The best way to understand the definitions of the measure of center is to start with some data. With this set of data, we will find the mean, median, mode, and midrange. Not all of our instructors here at Walter State talk about the midrange, but I will cover it on this video series. For the first video, I will cover the mean. What is the mean? It is the balance point of the data. When I use the word average, this is generally what we mean. How do we average our grade in a class? We add up all the grades and divide by the number of grades. We're assuming here that all the grades are weighted equally. Again, it's the balance point of the data. The sample mean has the following formula. X bar equals the sum of the X's divided by N. Notice that we have X bar and N both associated with samples. The population mean K 
can be found by adding up all the data values and dividing by the number in the population or mu equals the sum of the x's divided by capital N. Notice here that mu and capital N are associated with populations. For both sample mean and population mean, this is for, not for cases like where one grade counts high, a higher percentage or where more one, let me try that again. This is not for cases like where one grade counts a higher percentage where one test counts twice or 30 percent and another one only counts 15 percent. This is for equally likely members in a finite population. I said that the mean was the balance point of the data. Before we calculate it with a formula, I want to show you a picture of that. The data contains three entries for the number two and I show that by placing three blocks above this tick mark which will represent the two. And one three, so I place one block above this tick mark and four blocks above the, excuse me, six blocks above the tick mark for number four, two blocks above the tick mark for five, four blocks above the tick mark for six, and two blocks each for a tick mark for ten, and want two blocks for the eleven. Each graph is the same except where the red triangle is located. Which of these show a triangle at the balance point? Where does it balance? The mean is where the mean would be where the data would balance if the number line acted like a weightless seesaw. Imagine a seesaw that balances out. Well we can see that the top one and the bottom one aren't balanced and wouldn't balance if we tried to balance it here or here. Which would be the mean? The center one. It's obvious how the middle picture is close to where it would balance. To find the exact number, we will have to do our calculations. Back to our formula. Which one of these do we need to use? The sample mean because that's the one that our problem, our data says, let's try that one again, because that's what our problem says. Our problem tells us that our data is a sample, language-based course, so we must read the problem, not just look at the numbers. The formula is x bar equals the sum of the x's divided by n the sample size. So add up all the x's, all the data, and no I'm not going to read all the data out, but you'll add all those up and divide by 20. When you add those up you get 109 divided by 20 gives us 5.45. That's the sample mean, the balance point of the sample data. Let's compare that to our picture. Here's our graph again. Notice this time Mrs. Borlaug added the scale to the graph so that you can see how the blocks match up to the picture. Remember how we found the mean with our formula. The sum of the x's are 109 divided by 20 equals 5.45 and the red triangle represents our balance point and how it falls on our graph at approximately 5.45. Thank you for watching and we'll conclude this first video on measures of center here. Please watch the other videos where, we'll, where we will cover the rest of 
the topics.